Chapter 65 The Right Way It was a complicated mess, and I am not sure I can recall more than a few high points. This man, with a good family and a good position, gambled and lost heavily. He took company money to pay the gambling debts when he was threatened. When it was necessary to replace the money to avoid trouble, he stole an heirloom item of jewelry from his wife and sold it. By this time, he had lost more money gambling, and he again took company money. Much later, when it was over, he had ruined his family, destroyed his career, hurt his company, and involved several good friends by borrowing heavily from them. His excuse was that, all along, he had hoped for a lucky break to write everything. However, as a sociologist P.J. Bauman once wrote of history, a bad business can never have a good ending. Men, of course, keep hoping that it will. Let us be good to the communists and overlook their evils, and maybe good will come of it, they hope. Or let us be kind to criminals, and perhaps it will influence them for good. St. Paul summed up this ugly philosophy. Let us do evil that good may come, Romans 3.8 and 6.1. Let us sin, say these men, and somehow good will result from it. Well, I stole, claimed a man once, so that I could afford to go straight. But only those men are straight who are honest, trustworthy, and godly at all times. Our character is revealed under pressure. To believe that theft can prepare the way for honesty is to believe in a morally upside-down world. It is to insist that, if we sin, grace can abound. And yet, in our time, all too many men in the church, as well as in politics, believe that such moral confusion represents reality. Of such persons, St. Paul said that their damnation is just. Romans 3, eight. The last I heard, the gambler's bad business was showing signs of a good ending only because his wife had made a good beginning. She promised restitution to everyone and went to work to repay them. Her inheritance came through the courts, and she applied every penny to repay all persons. When it was over, she no longer had her home, but she had, with her children also working, repaid everyone. Her children had developed a strong character and a real sense of responsibility towards her, and she was a proud mother whose successful and married son was now helping her and the other children. A godly beginning was giving her godly results. When her husband was sentenced to prison, many felt that he was paying his debt to society. As a Christian, she believed that restitution was God's law, and she proceeded on that basis. What her relationship to her husband will be on his release will depend on many factors. In any case, she is sure of God's blessing because she is proceeding in terms of God's law. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 14.12 About the Author Russus John Rushduni, 1916-2001, was a well-known American scholar, writer, and author of over 30 books. He held B.A. and M.A. degrees from the University of California and received his theological training at the Pacific School of Religion. An ordained minister, he worked as a missionary among Paiute and Shoshone Indians, as well as a pastor to two California churches. He founded the Chalcedon Foundation, an educational organization devoted to research, publishing, and cogent communication of a distinctively Christian scholarship to the world at large. His writing in the Chalcedon Report and his numerous books spawned a generation of believers active in reconstructing the world to the glory of Jesus Christ. Until his death, he resided in Vallecito, California, where he engaged in research, lecturing, and assisting others in developing programs to put the Christian faith into action. The Ministry of Chalcedon Chalcedon is a Christian educational organization devoted exclusively to research, publishing, and cogent communication of a distinctively Christian scholarship to the world at large. 
It makes available a variety of services and programs, all geared to the needs of interested ministers, scholars, and laymen who understand the propositions that Jesus Christ speaks to the mind as well as the heart, and thus his claims extend beyond the narrow confines of the various institutional churches. We exist in order to support the efforts of all Orthodox denominations and churches. Chalcedon derives its name from the Great Ecclesiastical Council of Chalcedon, A.D. 451 which produced the crucial Christological definition, Therefore, following the Holy Fathers, we all, with one accord, teach men to acknowledge one and the same Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at once complete in Godhead and complete in manhood, truly God and truly man. This formula directly challenges every false claim of divinity by any human institution, state, church, cult, school, or human assembly. Christ alone is both God and man, the unique link between heaven and earth. All human power is therefore derivative. Christ alone can announce that all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Matthew 28:18. Historically, the Chalcedon Creed is therefore the foundation of Western liberty, for it sets limits on all authoritarian human institutions by acknowledging the validity of the claims of the one who is the source of true human freedom. Galatians 5.1 The Chalcedon Foundation publishes books under its own name and that of Ross House Books. It produces a magazine, Faith for All of Life, and a newsletter, The Chalcedon Report, both bi-monthly. All gifts to Chalcedon are tax-deductible, for complimentary trial subscriptions or information on other book titles, please contact Chalcedon, that's C-H-A-L-C-E-D-O-N, Box 158, Vallecito, California, 95251, USA, www.chalcedon.edu. This audio version of A Word in Season, Daily Messages on the Faith for All of Life, Volume 1 by R. J. Rush Dooney has been produced by Reconstructionist Radio and narrated by Dan and Becky Knopp. Please visit www.calcedonstore.com. That's C H A L C E D O N store.com to purchase a hard copy of this book.